for doing that though. <laughs> okay, everybody. Welcome to week two of our podcast. We are talking about pregnancy this week. Ooh. All of our favorite topics. Yeah. We have a special guest though. Davy is nursing. Davy's so, here. Davy's here. Jordan, you need to get closer to your mic, please. <laughs> I know you're busy. But Bring it in. Okay. <laughs> We're good. All right, so we are really excited to be talking about pregnancy. Do you want to do like a little disclaimer? Just because, I mean, pregnancy is such a personal experience and everybody has what works best for them, what they their preferences. And so we're going to just be speaking from our personal um, ex- uh, experience. experiences. Yeah, experiences. Yeah. So that is just personally what we prefer and um, all of us have different pregnancies as well mm-hmm. and so you'll hear kind of things from our perspective but also um if you choose a different way there's no judgment whatsoever it, this is just the way we do stuff so listen to it with open minds and um yes yeah. and if you ever have any questions about any of the things we say definitely mm-hmm. let us know we'd love to talk more about this i think we all like talking about this topic yes. it's very fun for us so just let us know but we're going to kind of like basically answer questions that came in this week about pregnancy from instagram so if you're not following us on instagram that is kind of where we're going to be posting like show topics show notes that kind of stuff and then any like question boxes that we guys we want you guys to input on things because you're the listener after all so we want to hear what you want us to talk about how do they find us on instagram yes and it is at mama birds podcast i believe i'm pretty sure that is exactly what it is so yeah and we're on instagram and then we'll be on youtube this week also so if you're watching us here we are <laughs> we all have our drinks and we're all ready to go all so, right go so go for it. we're gonna start with everyone just like kind of briefly explain what type of pregnant person oh are my you? goodness who wants to go first Ashton, <laughs> me. you go first <laughs> um i would say i had both like physically very good pregnancies. I was fortunate I didn't have any morning sickness or nausea with Cooper and I really I had no morning sickness with Blair. I was nauseous a couple of times but um, overall it was pretty smooth sailings with both of them. Which is nice to have a girl pregnancy and no like super bad sickness. Yes. Yeah. Because I feel like everyone I feel like everyone has <laughs> girls especially Jordan is always just the worst. Um, <laughs> but yeah I think uh, I don't know. I think my pregnancies went well and I'm very thankful and um, I don't even know about like I was thinking what was my mood like? Was I different? And I don't think I was different probably. Maybe slightly like more emotional at certain times but only Galen could probably attest to. Yeah, and to I feel like when you were pregnant that. with Cooper, like, no one even knew if you were pregnant. No, like, you never knew. You'd ask her, how are you doing today? She's Ashton? like, good. And she'd be like, good. Yeah. Good. Everything's Which was really good. nice. It was just, like, very <laughs> chill. Yeah. So that was, that was good. Yeah. Mom, yeah. you tell us about your pregnancies. Oh, okay. So I knew right from the very beginning, oh. without a shadow of a doubt, that I was going to have both, or all my kids at home. I was never worried about it never even thought twice about it no concerns I got pregnant had great pregnancies never felt any morning sickness I didn't have anything at all that was amazing I literally never even wore pregnancy clothes I mean I never got big enough to where I wore pregnancy clothes I just wore big shirts and some elastic waist stuff but it was it was great pregnancy the only thing that I would say is as um, my pregnancies went on I developed varicose veins that created a lot of pain in your legs in my legs of course yeah so in my legs I had a lot of pain towards the end of the pregnancies I had a hard time standing I would have to wear some of those prescription hose to um, compact all that Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, then after the after giving birth it you know there was a little bit more pain involved in that um, each month when I'd menstruate because just having uh, um, so much pressure down there so that was a bad thing but let's just say on the flip side the really cool thing about that is when I started CrossFit my legs 
started getting better and all my spider veins started going away because the muscle became so much more strong that uh, it, you know, didn't <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was compensating. I don't know, yeah, yeah I don't, don't know how to yeah. explain it, but it I did strengthen either. the walls yeah. and they no longer protruded out. They were being held in. So it really helped immensely Which on my so leg pain. Which is so crazy because I feel like a lot of women get like the varicose veins, but no one really talks about. I feel like there's so many things nobody talks about. Yeah, there are in a lot regards of no one talks about. Which that is like not how I was when I was. Let me tell you about all of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like no one ever told me after after birth was going to be painful, oh. and I'm not kidding you. That was worse than. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I, so therefore after, I was like, I'm making ladies. sure I tell all these ladies that yes. after birth is painful. <laughs> Which thank God I did not experience that. Yeah, but, but that that normally comes with the second one. Oh the well, first then one I'm still on track because I have only one. Which child. is so bizarre, but it after birth pains only come when you're nursing your second and oh. can all the other babies after that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. So when you were when you were actually pregnant, mom. Yeah. Do you remember having morning sickness? At no, all? I never had morning sickness. So you were just smooth sailing. Smooth sailing all the way. Never, For all your pregnancies. All my pregnancies, I never felt weird. I maybe had. I had really weird uh, cravings. Mm -hmm. I had some really weird things like that. But I, other than my leg pain, I never felt anything. I felt like everything. So was basically, you know, in what to expect when you're. I expecting. was literally going to talk about that movie, and it, I was going to use that as a comparison. And like, apparently, mom was Brooklyn Decker. Yeah. <laughs> She's like had the twins and sneezed, and they came out. No, it wasn't like that. I will tell you, the leg pain was no, real. No, the pregnancy definitely yeah. had some uh, yeah. leg pain. That was, but yeah, no, it was uh, all my deliveries were very very different they yeah. were very different but i think everybody's is i yes. think everybody's deliveries are very different so that's true it's very true jordan take it away i just i love talking about jordan's pregnancies because <laughs> they involve everybody they, <laughs> they really do i'm going to be really careful with how i say this because i am really believing for redemption in this area <laughs> yes so i'm going to say how they used to be mm -hmm. and how my prior pregnancies were we're rough. Yeah. To put it nicely. Yeah. I feel like every symptom, I get it. Apparently the whole, yours, that's not mm -hmm. genetic, apparently. No. You don't have the same type of pregnancy <laughs> as your mom. Thing, unfortunately, is. Yes. The varicose vein, uh, that got worse each pregnancy. Really bad. But yeah, I'm definitely one of those, like, I'll, I'll be on the toilet bowl until... For throwing up, not anything else. <laughs> I was going to say, like, oh, so by that. I'll be all the pot. I will be throwing up until like 20 weeks, and I will get all the just awful symptoms and everything. For all your kids. For all of them. Yep. But they yeah. all were girls, so, you know. That's why I'm literally terrified of having a girl, but maybe the girl didn't have it like Ashton that. Ashton didn't. Yeah. So. We had the same, like, hormonal thing, though. She got that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she got that. <laughs> but yeah. my girls and their hormones. Yeah, in the past, I'm yes. I'm one of those like I'm not the only one pregnant. It's the entire yeah. family coming along for the ride with me. Yeah, mm -hmm. sorry guys, <laughs> but she does make great kids, so it kind of makes it worth. It's it. also worth yes. it. It is so true. I can I can be in torture for yeah ten. Minutes. But somehow Jordan is like in the gym. Jordan's stronger when she's pregnant. For Darcy's. Oh, I you'd still kick my butt in everything. <laughs> like at all times. I have to really censor myself. Yeah. I almost There's say a lot of comments. details <laughs> with everyone's pregnancy that I don't think we need to bring up today, but I definitely encourage anyone that has questions. Uh, we have yeah, a lot Yeah, if you of, want to know details, you can you can ask us, but we'll yeah, keep there's it. There's quite a we'll bit. Keep it brief. Yeah, we'll keep it. We want to keep it brief, but there is a lot of insight to each one of these women mm -hmm. and including yeah, moms pregnancy. Yeah, because I mean going back to it, birth is very like personal mm -hmm. and it's that way for a reason. It's kind of like there's no one size fits all when you're pregnant or like when you birth. And it's just very mm -hmm. cool to kind of see. Like, I feel like within our family, we've had so many different types that we've almost like covered it all. Like, really, mm -hmm. honestly, which is kind of cool. But um, so, yeah, so definitely, if you, sorry, not no, to cut you're you off, good. just one last thing yeah, on that. Go. Yeah. So if there is a specific weird thing that's going on in mm -hmm. your pregnancy, or just like something that you're like, huh, ask because I probably had it, or like one yes, of them. For <laughs> sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like if you're having like anything that you even like personal you can always like message any of us on instagram like mm -hmm. directly too like you can totally i'll put our um handles 
in on our Instagram individually so that you guys can reach out. But I think we're all very open. So if you have like a weird question that you're like, okay, I'm pregnant and this is happening to me. Is this normal? I mean, like we're not experts, but we there's experience around all of us. Um, so if you want to pop in those DMs, yeah. you know, slide on in. We obviously have <laughs> midwives we could yes. ask too. Yeah, I, so. I honestly thought it would be really fun to put our midwives on the podcast at some point. So mm -hmm. if you guys want to, like down the road, we could maybe do that. I think they'd like that. They're I think awesome. that would be really cool. Yeah, that would, that would be, be cool. Because there's, there's and they're experts, so yeah. like more. We're just like we just lived it. Yeah, more like <laughs> specific questions regarding yes. like midwifery and home birth. I feel like they could mm -hmm. answer yes. uh, in depth and like really well. That's so. true. Not that we can't, but they're just they have a level of expertise that we obviously do not have. That's so true. <laughs> okay, so my birth, uh, or not my birth, my pregnancy. I'm sorry. I kind of like. Not that I was Brooklyn Decker in What to Expect When You're Expecting, but like I really liked being pregnant. And I really liked being pregnant after like the first like 12 weeks. I did have like a little bit of morning sickness, but it was more like I felt car sick and I was just really wanting McDonald's every day. That's the only thing I had. I never like puked, which was so a gift from God. I'm terrified of puke. That's just a side note of me. Um, but I was like, I never did that. And then after like 12 weeks, I felt really good. I felt like, like I was very tired, but I felt like great. It was not bad at all. Um, yeah, my, I will say like the symptoms I had, it was like my nipples hurt all the time. Like I couldn't, like if I was at the gym and I had a bra on, it would be like, I'd have to stop doing what I was doing because I wanted to cry because it was just like the friction was so bad <laughs> but like my symptoms were like things like that and I was pregnant in the middle of summer so I was so mm -hmm. hot mm -hmm. and that was another thing like my body didn't want clothes to be mm -hmm. on it so like everywhere I went I looked like I mean <laughs> I was kind of like a little trailer mama I always had my top <laughs> way up and my belly hanging out but that's just what felt good and I really wanted to be in the water all the time but like honestly, everything was really, really good until the end, which even that was, it ended up being fine. But I I had planned for a home birth and then I didn't get to follow through with that because I developed cholestasis. And so basically that's like what you get in like your third trimester. It's very rare, very rare. And it's, I mean, in simple terms, like your liver stops flushing out the toxins, so it becomes very toxic to your baby. So it's very, like, very um, time sensitive. So I had to get induced um, and then go to the hospital and do that whole thing. Um, I still did it unmedicated, but that was, it was really great up until then. And even then, it was still really wonderful. I was very proud of myself. And I did get to have one of my midwives there, which was really great. It happened in the middle of 2020, so. I was just grateful for like anyone being able to come with me through that. But yeah, so that was my yeah. Out of experience. all people to have to experience something yes. like that, Darren is it, it's wow. I think I think everyone I felt was so really bad. nervous for me. <laughs> I felt so bad. Like I could take one for the team because I can handle that situation. Yeah. But poor thing, she is definitely the type that likes everybody around her. She loves yeah. all the party. We, I mean, if you know anything about our family, we have uh, everyone in the family yes. there. There's probably 15, 20 people at each one of our births. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. We did give Ashton a lot of grace on her, on her having hers. She she didn't get baptized right away with our no, family. I was, I was literally, I was literally gonna say, I was like Ashton's like with Blair. I'm like, I'm pretty sure Jordan was holding back a leg. <laughs> I was taking pictures. Yeah. That's what we were doing. Yeah, I feel like by Blair, I I mean, I knew what labor felt like. Yeah. I knew that I wanted that to be over as mm -hmm. quick as possible. And at that point, I was like, well, if this is the best position for me to get Blair out the fastest, then let's do it. Yeah, it's true. But it was like, yeah, that was probably like my pregnancy. I still don't. I think my pregnancy was like I just because it didn't end how I wanted it to like it's it wasn't bad it was still mm -hmm. really really good mm -hmm. and I'm like 
I still believe in like redemption from that. But I will say like just a quick side note before we move on to questions. Like if you were planning on giving birth a certain way and it didn't get to work out that way for like an emergency kind of like I had, it's okay to be like really sad about that and have to mourn that. Because like I said, it is very personal. And like, yes, this is like, this is what, it was my first time ever having a baby and ever birthing. And this is also after I watched my sisters do it. And like, I always dreamt of having this like beautiful home birth. And so the fact that I didn't get that, I really did have to like heal from not being able to get that. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. And like, mm -hmm. it's still, I'm very proud of myself. There were so many things that were great about it. And I still saw God like work through all that. And I honestly like there's sometimes where I'm like, you know what, that's actually really good because I proved myself like how strong I actually was through that. And sometimes mm -hmm. that's like the most important thing. So, um, yeah. So if you didn't get to have your birth the way you wanted to, it's okay to be sad and like mourn that. But I think it's important to actually like mourn it, which that sounds like kind of dramatic, but it really is because you plan and you prepare your body and your mind for this. And then when in the, like, for me, it was within like 12 hours, everything changed right, so yeah. fast that it was like, I have to just like, I have to go. Go do this right yes. now. Like I'm yeah. doing this right now and totally not the way I want it to do. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Like not so at all. It just makes you stronger. Yes. You realize how strong oh, you are. And yeah. it was really good. I think that was almost kind of comical of God because I've always been very like my pain tolerance is very low. I'm a very fearful person. And all at once I had to do all these things yeah. that I was scared of and probably the most pain I've ever been in. I, I'm not even a dumb. That's not a question. It was the most pain I've ever been in. <laughs> and so it was like, but you know what? It was great. So yeah. Yeah. it's still really good. Okay. So do you guys, we got some questions and we can kind of just round robin it. We don't have to go in order unless you want to. Round robin. Round robin. Isn't that what they say in school? Round robin. Like, <laughs> like round like, robin. Like a bird. Round robin. Go around. Yeah. Go around. <laughs> Sorry. Go around. Jordan, you go first then. Since you are Ooh. a little sass. <laughs> you don't want to go in order? Okay, we'll go in order. <laughs> All right, well, God, I got the fun age. question. It's not, I don't have a lot to say about it. It. Um, somebody said sex or lack thereof. So mm. I'm assuming they want to know. Um, like in pregnancy. Do during you have pregnancy. sex or do you not want to have sex? Yes. How does it feel? A lot. How does a feel? lot of sex during pregnancy. I mean, I felt when I was pregnant. <laughs> I <laughs> Sorry, I was laughing at Jordan's face. <laughs> I was way more aggressive when I was pregnant. Oh, I, like, was, I was for sure feeling like, all, like, like throughout the whole thing. Or oh, like, like my times? whole pregnancy, I felt so sexy. Oh, I think that's one of the things get the that I love. Stuff, huh? No, I didn't get the. <laughs> I didn't get like when I was pregnant. I was like, dang, Darren, get it, girl. That's I think Dad felt. liked me pregnant. God yeah. was definitely. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I always wanted to do that. And, and, a little different for me. <laughs> <laughs> in fact at the end it was like even more because it was like you get it going mm -hmm. girl let's get this baby out let's yeah go. you got a mission now <laughs> the visions <laughs> might change a little but I yeah think, that's true yeah. that is true i was very much like but i like my sex drive was very high when i was pregnant yeah. and i was just like this is like a silly thing, but like when you're pregnant, your belly's big. You're right. So you just don't really care. Like now, like if you're not pregnant, you're like, oh, I'm bloated. I don't feel very cute. But like when you're pregnant, you're like, I am bloated and big and I don't have to hide this. Like this is just <laughs> majestic and this is what I look like. So just let it out. Yeah. And there is like a thing where I think like, like Carson at least, he was like, yeah pregnant Darren I was a big girl you know and it was like it was nice I liked it I think you have to like lean into that so I definitely that was like my best sex year mm. <laughs> yay okay I talk about sex a lot and I always make Jordan nervous oh, you don't make me nervous okay I'm just just laughing yeah I, okay. Jordan didn't have that you know, experience you have well I feel like it was very like there was like that second trimester I had that uh -huh. mm -hmm. where I think with all of them, like I felt that way, but like definitely not like first trimester and no. definitely not third trimester either. So just right there in the middle. Like in the middle. What about you, that for you? Or is it? Um, <laughs> were you a little <laughs> rabbit? Like <laughs> <laughs> I would probably just say I feel like we were just consistent. Like, I mean, there wasn't like a noticeable difference between yeah. like non-pregnancy and pregnancy um but 
masculine. I, I mean, it's so <laughs> funny. Like, I don't guess. totally remember. <laughs> um, but I don't remember, like, being... I know there are some people who are maybe even, like... I hope this is the right way to put it, but, like, fearful. Yeah. And I'm like... Like, I is it going to poke the baby? Yeah. Like, I didn't have any fears about it during pregnancy. I There's nothing to be worried about, so... Yes. Um, oh, my gosh, though. Like, something that was awful that happened third trimester that's why maybe that's the last memory i have but remember i had a varicose vein up there yeah. oh, and no. so i literally could not have sex yes. for the entire like probably like the last mm-hmm. three months so now I that you say you that it that. does ring a bell that i do remember with those veins mm-hmm. that it didn't hurt so much that night oh the next but day. the next day <gasps> oh getting out of bed walking oh it was so well, painful. i remember i had to sit like a like, rough workout <laughs> this is <laughs> We got that, uh, we got that, that cow. That's how I can time it. What Whenever we got cow? that cow in front of the butcher. Oh, like to eat the cow. <laughs> <laughs> but I just remember going to the freezer and getting a hunk of that meat and <gasps> I had to sit on it because it hurts. <laughs> Did you make that for dinner? No, no point, I didn't. <laughs> it was this just so, crotch bar it was, color, it was oh literally gosh. the only thing. <laughs> It was so bad. It was the day we went to go see Redeeming Love in oh. theaters. And it was that day, and I literally couldn't walk. I remember that. And that day. was the last time that I. So, whenever Redeeming Love came out, that was the last time That's I had a, sex I before had a good David day was born. That day. I remember that. Oh. I do remember, though, that this is like a funny thing, but I don't know if it was with Blair or Cooper. I feel like it was Blair. But once I. Like as you get closer to the end, it had to have been with Blair because I didn't. I was. I didn't go over with Cooper, but I remember my midwives being like, "Yeah, go have some fun with your husband yes. to get this labor going. Mm-hmm. Like, let's get That's this." That's actually true. Okay, so yeah. I did do it again because I was way overdue with Davy, and I was like, "Okay, I got to try this." And I was scared to do it because I'm like, "What happens That's if that right. pain happens?" I actually and then I kind of remember to this. Yep. Go into labor, and I'm yeah. in that pain, so oh, it was like goodness. really scary. But I did it. And then I literally went into labor mm-hmm. like three hours later. Right. Wow. So yeah. that I think is, a, if your body is ready, I think that is a true And method. honestly, yeah. you don't have to be careful when you're pregnant either. So that's another so, perk. Yeah, that that's is, a, I think it's that's like the, it gives <laughs> yes. you that boost of oxytocin even. Yes. So that might be like helpful in jump starting labor. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oxytocin and softening the cervix. Mm-hmm. Softening the cervix. I like how you whispered <laughs> that into this. Soften the cervix. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, podcast well, <laughs> yes. I'm going to turn it up so we get like a little situation. No, yeah, like I love that. And like just, you know, everything is more, like your boobs are bigger. Everything's just feeling better. Oh, yeah. That was me at least. I loved it. <laughs> loved it. All right. I'm so happy for you. All right, let's move on to the next. another one. Yeah, everyone's Jordan. trying to talk me into it. <clears throat> All right, What's Jordan. all the deets of about home birth? Wow, let's have mom read all the books. <laughs> That's right. That was so I'm smooth. Like, What's the deets? <laughs> What's that mean? Details. All right. Oh, so the details. Mom, it's the okay. older one of the group. Yep. That's, I'm going to just say it. I read that three times. I was like, What's the deets? Is that a typo? Mom, <laughs> like, what is a deet? <laughs> <laughs> which is really cool. This girl who actually submitted this question had a home birth of twins which is really cool that is awesome. which, that's, awesome. that's not even legal in a lot of places but where she's at i guess it is, which it, is girl i'm like dang girl i'm proud of you yeah that's awesome um, but yeah so home birth which is i think uh, we i've had two home births ashen's had one one at a birth one, center and yeah, so, one at yeah yeah so home. our first ash and i's first separately first it was at a home <laughs> was at, was um we're we're birth center births mm-hmm. yes all of moms were home births and then you were planned transfer yeah kind of um so basically i guess we'll just go through like what that looks like kind mm-hmm. of and just try to like come up with as many you guys can fill in the gaps yeah sure That's perfect. but basically like when you choose to have a home birth you start obviously with like finding a uh, midwife there are so many amazing midwives we've met a lot of them um who we l- who we chose um for ours is mary and carol which love them so much Mm -hmm. i remember just specifically praying for like just midwives who loved the lord and who were just like so calm and like caring which is which the second characteristics are of like a lot of midwives but the whole christian part was like who loved the lord was a big part for me and that's kind of harder to find so they were amazing and so just like 
having your list of questions going and asking a bunch of them to midwives will help you find like mm-hmm. who you want to be with yes. um, but so basically that and then your appointments when you are having a home birth are really cool because either they are in your own home or you go to their office which might be an office but a lot of them are through their home as well so it's a very like comfortable setting where you just feel like if you have kids you can bring your kids with you and it's not a like standard office mm-hmm. feeling it's mm-hmm. very very comfortable and so i loved those i could bring like my husband my kids with me if i wanted to and everything starts off with just like how are you feeling like it's just a very personal relationship when you're working with a midwife like i think that that's the biggest thing when you choose that type of care everything is very personalized and mm-hmm. it's not like you're just another patient coming through you are like a whole person and they are getting to know you everything about you because honestly like the more information that they have about you the better they can serve and the better they know how your body is going yeah. to handle labor which is a big thing like when you are having a home birth you want they want to know like okay are you a really high stress person what this is going to be an issue in these areas and are you this so they try to like get to know you and it's really really awesome um they get to know you really yeah because really, really you well. do go to many more appointments yes. than you would yeah. any other you do. And it's more personalized yes. that's the thing with home birth is it's a very personal experience and when you begin that they aren't looking at your pregnancy as maybe like a i don't know if, not procedure is not the right word but it's not like a thing that's happening like to you yeah. it's like something that you're doing we're all experiencing and we're together. experiencing it it's more of like an experience and it's not like a um there's no fear that goes within it it's like okay this is so exciting like here's mm-hmm. like kind of how we do it so it's just more mm-hmm. yeah i think it's just more um it's less stress so if like you're someone who's very like gets stressed easily especially in like more mm-hmm. like doctor settings like this is a really good like alternative yeah um so also when you do a home birth and are working with a midwife not just home birth because this is how birth centers are mm-hmm. for the most part unless you're a high risk person you are going to have very very minimal tests that are run mm-hmm. and um that goes for ultrasounds as well like you will probably mm-hmm. only have one ultrasound your entire pregnancy unless there's other risk factors that you're dealing yes. with um and then some midwives do have ultrasound capability but most of the time you'll go um (laughs) you'll go um somewhere else and that is also a really cool situation because there's like ones that can come to your home and do Mm -hmm. ultrasounds you can go to their home it's just cool it's a different world but it is awesome um and then like as far as like uh gestational diabetes tests like usually you'll go and take the drink in standard care with midwives like ours you just eat like a big high carb breakfast and then you go test your blood it's really it's yes. just cool Which i thought that was glass really of orange cool. juice yeah glass of orange juice with a high carb breakfast and then you go test mm-hmm. your blood it's all mm-hmm. just like it's just awesome um i like why i specifically chose home birth and um one it was very natural in our family obviously i was born at home um everybody in our family for the most part had home births so that's what i grew up thinking was normal and comfortable Mm -hmm. and so we are obviously more of the like hippy dippy side where it's like that's just kind of normal to us but like that we understand that's very weird for a lot of people that can be really weird for people and so that's why i will say over and over like if you are choosing your type where you're going to give birth it's where you feel most comfortable if you Mm -hmm. feel most comfortable in a hospital then that's where you're going to feel the most comfortable i personally love that i got to set up my bedroom and it was just the most comfortable safe place Mm -hmm. for me um so i just i really love my pregnancy with davy was very very it was a very stressful time that like season that i was going through and having my midwives be like there and knowledge like they had the knowledge of what was going on in my life they walked me through a lot of really like hard things that i would not have gotten Mm -hmm. in like standard care um i remember like at the end of my pregnancy i was my midwives just knew that i was going through it and i will just never forget it because like this i like still think about this comment that my midwife told me like so many times now still but i was like leaving and she said jordan like god already knows 
mm-hmm. what's going to happen. He knows when Davy's going to be born. He knows what you're still going to be going through. And he is holding your hand and he's already there and giving you exactly what you need for mm-hmm. each moment. And I still think about that all the time. And so yeah, Carol, that's awesome. I just love her. Like, that's just like the type of relationship yes. that you meet, mm-hmm. you get with yeah. It's, it's a, there's emotional support there yes. because they understand mm-hmm. your life, your lifestyle. They what become like through. part yeah. of, yes your family mm-hmm. basically mm-hmm. um so yeah there's like a million reasons yeah that you, it's so that, true. like i chose it it's just a very like i got to set the stage of where i was going to give birth um mm-hmm. it was just it's such a like sacred like comfortable intimate setting and it's just it's just different it's cool mm-hmm. um as far as like things like pain management that's another thing midwives have gone through this a million times mm-hmm. they can talk to you like yes birth is painful Obviously, we understand that, um, and it was. I'm not going to say that it is not. However, you you are capable. Yes. As a yes. woman, you mm-hmm. are capable of going through it, and it's not like um, you are going to be sitting there and you have to like go through every contraction while you're sitting in a bed. So that I think is like when I hear like I could never do that. I could never do that. Yes. I don't. I I understand why you think that because. Mm-hmm. TV shows, movies, what you have seen of it shows you that you cannot do it. Yes. But and I, there's fear associated with it. And there's fear. fear. Yeah. It yes. is. Mm-hmm. And fear causes pain. Mm-hmm. And that's where a lot of pain comes from. So, if, like, I don't want to say that there's not pain, but I do want to say that you are capable. Yes. 100%. And when you're at home or you're in a comfortable setting, that is a huge source of pain management because you can just get up, walk around what is you your surroundings that you know and that is a huge thing mm-hmm. in and of itself but also like water being in the shower like midwives are just equipped with so many ideas That's for awesome. yes and ideas for what to do and how to get through and how to manage things and honestly like it 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 is hard I do not want to misconstrue that. Yeah, like if you do, if you decide to do like an unmedicated home yes. birth or something, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, this is like really hard. It's like, yes, yes we totally agree with that. And, but I think like, I think there's like hard is not bad. Like I think yes. that's something that I think we've all kind of learned mm-hmm. is like hard is not a bad thing. And a lot of people will also wonder like, well, if you have all these other options to not maybe feel as much pain, like why? I'm like I, I personally believe I'm like there's something very beautiful about being totally aware of what your body is doing, especially because God designed our body to do this process. And so feeling that happen mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. so amazing. And I think birth, like yes, we are doing it for our baby, but so much of it is like for you. Mm-hmm. And there's mm-hmm. so much that goes on in our like our mind in our bodies that's like it is so beautiful to feel that and Mm -hmm. it's just like for me because I I had to get induced being pregnant so Mm -hmm. I did it induced without medication or pain management and I was like this is so intense and so terrifying but I was like it almost made my love like for my child even greater because I'm like Mm -hmm. it's just so hard what I'm doing but like my midwife who was also one of Jordan's she's like you can do this though like this Mm -hmm. is like what god made your body to do and i'm like yes it totally gave me confidence and like the like yeah god did design my body to do this women have been doing this since the beginning of time you know i'm like Mm -hmm. so what makes me different nothing Mm -hmm. like i can do this (laughs) yeah i think that that's like a difference and i can only speak from Mm -hmm. what maybe other people have told me but i know that for me, like midwives are very empowering to yeah. you as a female, as someone who's carrying a child, in that they fully believe that you are capable of delivering your child's unmedicated, like natural physiological birth. Um, and they're going to remind you of that during your labor. It is very hard, it is very difficult, but there are so many things that they even teach you leading up to your birth, um, especially with like breathing techniques. I mean, Mm -hmm. I can say from my experience with Cooper, um, I maybe didn't like work on that as much leading up to that labor and delivery, but with Blair, that was something that was a primary focus and that was a completely different experience for me just because when i was going through contractions i was focused on my breathing and my breath work which honestly i 
it didn't get nearly as difficult until I was like almost in transition, if not in transition. So somewhere close to like eight centimeters dilated. Um, but they know so many things like mm -hmm. it is painful, but it's very manageable. Yeah. I had all lower back lo labor pains. So they were like, okay, we understand that. The best thing for you is going to be in the shower, the pressure from the shower head or Galen putting counter pressure on your lower back. And those relieved it a lot. And I always just focused on like, I only have to get through one contraction at a time. Mm -hmm. You don't need to focus on like the end game. You need to just say, I'm going to get through this contraction. And then when the next one comes, I'm going to get through this one. Which so, is a great metaphor for life. You yeah. should always be focused on the present. Yeah. And so the same is with your labors. Yeah. But I just, yeah. And, and it is wonderful just once you deliver your child to be in the comfort of your own home. You don't have to go anywhere to have your child. And you mm -hmm. don't have to leave anywhere to get home after your baby's born. Which is so nice because there's food and there's... <laughs> Comfort family and, and there's family, family yeah, support. and yeah. your midwives come to check on you um, the day after you give birth and if you need even more than that they will like come out again so you're not having to take you or your baby anywhere mm -hmm. shortly after birth to receive um, like checkups and care so it really is just um, yeah. it's really beautiful and yeah. like what you said too like with galen like doing counter pressure like it's an interactive experience for your family and your spouse too whoever mm -hmm. you decide to mm -hmm. be part of that like because birth like it is it is hard you don't want to do that alone so you want to have the people that you mm -hmm. love and trust around you because it's such a mind thing too like with the breathing and like with like mm -hmm. even other like things within labor it's like so much of it is mindset and having people who believe in you and know you mm -hmm. really well will like kind of speak that mm -hmm. into you and so i think that's really important my favorite birth i think is gonna be the funniest for other people to hear about but it was jordan's and mm -hmm. it was because i had like this is a long time ago how old are you 31 okay. so it was 31 years ago still fairly new that not a lot of people were doing it like they are doing it now and I was on uh, my second midwife because the midwife I used for Galen, I wasn't super. She was like, not very it was nice. Awful. She well, was mean. Let's there just are, say yeah. no. Let's just okay. let's just say we'll that let you talk. <laughs> <laughs> it gave me an, it gave me the presence of mind to find somebody else, and so I it's went so ahead nice. and I, I and I love I love her, <laughs> and you know in the midwife world here in Arizona, everyone probably knows her because she's been around forever as mm -hmm. Pam White, and mm -hmm. I absolutely had a great connection with her, and. We were in between houses, so I was living at at my mom and dad's house, so Nan and Papa's house, and I went into labor, and we knew that we were going to have a water birth, but this is before water tubs were really a big deal, so we just filled up Nan and Papa's big tub, and it was just awesome. Every time I have a contraction, I'm like, dang, that's this water is awesome. This is mm -hmm. great, and cut to, we already mentioned that we have a lot of family around. So I got into a position where I was standing, but then you get weak because you're pushing so much and you really mm -hmm. couldn't stand on my own two legs. Oh, I'm getting nauseous. So I literally <laughs> had my husband holding me up on the left and my brother in the tub holding me up on the right. Yeah, you become uninhibited. You Very not uninhibited. Care. My yeah. brother, though, was there for all, all my kids mm -hmm. being born. And... Uh, he was very helpful with all of them, and it's just really super cool because uh, I ha I was weightless. They were just holding me up, but the coolest thing was I felt Jordan coming down. I could feel every motion Jordan's of her coming cry. down, and it was just so cool. And I and she and because I was standing, gravity was on my side. It was mm -hmm. probably my least painful birth, and it was just super cool to be able to just sit down in that water and have that all the parts and and just allow me to yes. just sit there and enjoy this moment with everybody it was really it was one of, really it was my cool. favorite yeah. birth so um, I, before you finish because I want yeah. I just want to say something and then you can wrap that question up but I just want to like give a little shout out to you because since I had to have chip in hospital I remember so my midwife kind of orchestrated that where she called beforehand and she's like okay I have a home birth mom who is having to be transferred basically and so um, my nurses knew ahead of time that I was supposed to be having a home birth and it was just really really nice how they respected my choices because 
a lot of times like I'm really unfamiliar honestly with hospitals and like how that works but I know how home birth works so I remember them being like very respectful and they asked me when I got there like okay what do you want I go I don't want you guys to ask me about any like pain meds like I just want to do this the way I want to do it and they were like that's totally fine I had a really really good set of nurses and I just like that was a really nice experience and like that was kind of like I feel like a god wink at me Mm -hmm. because he's like it's okay I've got you even though you're in a situation Mm -hmm. that you don't want to be so I do just want to say like too that if you have different um choices that you want to make with your birth but you are more comfortable in the hospital you can express that and like it's still is your pregnancy too like if you don't want to do glycola drink or you don't if you want to just like i'm gonna eat a big breakfast and i'll come in and do the test yeah like i want you guys to know like it is still your birth so Mm -hmm. like regardless of protocol like it's still your birth and a lot of times like my that's just their protocol also it's not that they disagree with you or anything like that like Mm -hmm. my nurses were amazing and i was like this is what i want to do and they honestly they were like really encouraging to me and Mm -hmm. it was really great and they were even like they even did some of the things that um like a midwife would do like they took the time to be like do you want to like feel his head because he's here you know and like how are you like all these different things where i was like you know it's really nice like i've got a I've got an IV in my hand, which I don't want, but they're still like really taking yeah. care of me and making right. me feel as yeah. comfortable as I can. So that was like a really nice thing. So yeah. just shout out to Premier Care, right? Yeah, Premier, Premier Care. Care. If so you're if you're in, in Arizona, um, when you are with our midwives, you get your, um, you go, you have to establish care at Premier Care um, because just in case of transfer. So a lot of people question like um, home birth because of emergencies. So this was one of those cases that I had. So I had established care there. You have one an appointment you meet the doctor you talk to a nurse midwife kind of get in their system that way if you do have to get transferred they already know of you so that's what happened to me and um they were all really great and that that is the nice thing you do get a nurse midwife Mm -hmm. when you transfer with them so i still had people who were like um who were with me Mm -hmm. on that so the last thing that I want to touch on just with home birth it because one of the biggest questions are what if something goes wrong yeah. mm-hmm. so like there's obviously your case where a transfer is necessary mm-hmm. um, I'll talk about the last thing I'll talk about is just my personal experience yes. of something that important. did go wrong and um, and how it could be scary and you would think oh like you could never do that at home however with my middle child Darcy she was she surprised us all in the middle of labor and she happened to flip to breach which if so, you know her yeah which makes total <laughs> sense now <laughs> but um that's basically if you don't know what breach is that means that i mean there's a different there's a few different presentations of that but she was frank breach so her butt was first I yeah she was like yeah. in a taco yeah she, she was, was like folded. completely folded yeah. in half with her butt coming first mm-hmm. she's a very bony person uh we still, thought it was her head at the beginning person. but it was her it was her butt so <laughs> she started coming butt first and um so a lot of people would be freaked out by that i was in la la birth land so i Mm -hmm. honestly i still to this day will say that darcy was the easiest best labor and delivery I and had. it was the coolest to yes. watch i will say as, to, as an a outsider front row seat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and your our midwives gave you the option yes, yes. That so point. that's what i was going to talk about so in the case that something does go wrong like that like that is one of those things that probably shocked everyone um another thing was like my midwives were very very calm they came to me they gave me facts so that is a big thing too with midwife care mm-hmm. they were all my decisions they will give me facts and i will base i will make the decision based off of the facts mm-hmm. for everything throughout the and entire Darcy pregnancy. presented um head down like the day before so yeah. she yeah. flipped during yeah. labor yeah. yeah so um they said you know and i was already almost at the pushing stage um so it like really was right at the end and kind of uh like a whirlwind at the end there but um basically they said okay jordan if you go to the hospital if you even make it to the hospital because you are so far along right now like it's very very possible that you will be giving birth in the back of an ambulance however if you make it there you will be having a c-section so because that's just standard protocol for for um breach breach, birth yeah breach babies unless you find a doctor specific for that but they said you are completely capable of doing this we know exactly what to do we are very confident in this and whether or not they felt that com- confident anywhere else but they did not i felt 100 confident with how they were talking to me so they told me 
you need to get into this position because I made the decision. I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. You just tell me what to do and let's do it. Um, and honestly, it was so much, it was so soon after that, that she, it was literally two contractions. I it think, was and so she bad. It was to watch. fast. It was, it, it was, was so fast. It was so fast. She was out. It felt, un- it was like the best like birth they ever. got you off the bed yes. over the ball boom boom yes baby and she born. was out it was crazy so it was like, so cool and midwives are that's a difference i i am going to say that i know this based on like reading articles mm-hmm. and things but midwives um are very trained in delivering breech babies yes um i know that that's not common practice to my knowledge, I because again, I'm not an expert, to my, but to my knowledge, that's not common practice for physicians because it's or or a medical setting because they do typically say that we're going to do mm-hmm. a C-section. But I know that Carol and Mary had delivered several breech babies, and there's even a lot of evidence out there to suggest that like it is possible you just have to be trained in how to live to yeah. deliver mm-hmm. and midwives are very trained and stuff like that yeah so and also like there's been a lot of things they like midwives just because you're having at home they bring a lot of like there's a lot of equipment that's brought i have been put on oxygen for i think two of my yes. just based not just on precaution of things and like and I also bleed a lot after I have babies. So they have they have a lot of training in what to do in those situations. They do have like Pitocin and stuff like that in the case of needing it to stop hemorrhaging. So they come equipped with a lot of stuff. It's not like yeah. you just pull someone off the street. There's nothing and- they haven't seen <laughs> too. Yes. You know, seen a it's lot of stuff. So. Like every birth is different, but like midwives, they have seen so much stuff. Yes. They they are aware and honestly like too that's why it's so important to trust your providers too and i think Mm -hmm. that's like all those pre-appointments like there was nothing there would be nothing that like for our midwives especially i'm like i trust them like they know and they wouldn't ever put you in danger or something like that like yeah because a lot of people are worried about that and also um a lot of times it's the husbands who are really worried about home birth and um they do a really good job of like answering questions and they all our midwives offered a birth class which me and carson attended because it was our first baby and it was really good and it was even funny because like i felt like carson was more gung-ho about home birth than like, i even was afterwards Honestly, he was like he's like this is legit like if I it's your this. first baby regardless yeah. of where you're having it you should go to a birth class for your husband's oh, sake oh yeah more than anything mm-hmm. it is so good for the yes, husband for sure and for you too but yes what if you are Should pregnant for the, the first time or even maybe it's the next it's your second or third baby you're trying to decide what is the best option for you in terms of your provider and what your care is going to look like i always just challenge you because um when i was pregnant with cooper as my first i did a lot of research before i made any decisions just because galen really wanted me to make a choice that was the most comfortable for me Mm -hmm. um and so i would just challenge you to do your research um because there's a ton of information out there if you have concerns about safety or things like that there's so much information out there that shows um that home birth is safe and that there's studies that show that and so if you're thinking about it but you're concerned about safety or you're concerned about pain management just Mm -hmm. do your research it's out there and available and 100 percent Okay, that is amazing. I love it. Let's um let's segue into <laughs> we've got Davy as a special guest, if I didn't say, and she's she wants boobies right now. So <laughs> I honestly think this is great that she's here During for this, this one. one. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Breastfeeding, you know, that's a whole nother thing, but we won't talk about that right now. Okay, Ashton, the next question is kind of just talking about we do CrossFit. Mm-hmm. So kind of CrossFit and pregnancy, but also just like working out in general. What are your thoughts? Like what's your experience with that? Sure. Um, well, I'll start by just saying that um, I think it's incredibly important for your pregnancy, for the health, of, for your health during your pregnancy, even your baby's health during your pregnancy, and even into the postpartum period. I think exercise and movement is very important. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we 
have chosen CrossFit. That's, you know, we attend classes. I go five times a week to a CrossFit gym. Um, but any exercise during your pregnancy is beneficial. I think it helps with preparing your body for labor. Um, while you are not training for a marathon or you are not training for uh, a race or a competition, you are training for birth. From the time you get pregnant, you have nine months until you're going to be giving birth. Um, so I think exercise is incredibly beneficial to preparing your body for birth. Mm -hmm. um, Gail and I started CrossFit in 2017 in August. I found out I was pregnant in September. So for me, it was an interesting thing because I was like, well, should I continue? I just started a month ago. I now found out I'm pregnant. Yeah. And I just felt really strongly that that was an environment that I wanted to be in during my mm -hmm. pregnancy. Um, I know that there might be some misconceptions about CrossFit in general, but even specifically when it comes to pregnancy, um, everything inside a CrossFit gym is scalable, every single movement. So when I am at the beginning of my pregnancy, I'm doing mostly what I've been doing leading yeah. up to that in terms of movements. But as I go along, we have coaches that are really incredible about watching to make sure that um, I am in the right positions. I'm doing things that are safe for me while I'm pregnant. Um, I, they, a lot of times our coaches are even more like, more okay, yeah, yeah, they're more safe than we are. <laughs> like for, <laughs> for example, when both of my pregnancies, um, at different times, I eventually got to the point where if I was hanging on the bar to do pull-ups, I would show signs of coning, which can later turn into diastasis recti, mm -hmm. which you want to avoid that separation of the abdominal muscles. And immediately our coaches were like, all right, so we're done with that now, which was good. Mm -hmm. So, um, I would just say if you are pregnant to find a type of exercise that you enjoy, um, for me, it's obviously going to a CrossFit gym, but I just think it's super beneficial to be working out during your pregnancy and it gives you good practices that will transfer into postpartum as well. Um, I think exercise in postpartum is beneficial for a whole other slew of mm -hmm. reasons, including like mental clarity and, um, just having some time to yourself as a mom. So, um, yes. And if you're looking for pages to follow, um, BirthFit is an incredible resource. They have a website mm -hmm. as well as an Instagram, and they're really great about um, helping you identify things that you can be doing during your pregnancy for exercise, as well as like scaling the yes. options at a CrossFit gym. And then um, there's another one. I think her name's Brianna Battles, and she's uh, like a postpartum prenatal exercise mm -hmm. coach we'll tag or something like that. The, yeah. We'll tag. We'll make a post and tag all these accounts. So Plus, pregnant. not to mention mm -hmm. the recovery. And I <laughs> like mm -hmm. this was CrossFit wasn't around when I was giving birth, but I'll tell you, watching these moms <laughs> give birth and then getting back in the gym and getting their bodies back, it's. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like you guys are awesome. It's yeah. really the workouts awesome. made me feel, especially since I chose to have an unmedicated, like, physiological birth, doing workouts in a gym made me feel confident that I could do something yes. that's hard. Because it's really hard. Because it is hard. Yeah. And if you're local and you're looking yeah. for a place to work out, we love our gym, obviously, and it's Tusk um, Athletics. So yes. you can come check it out. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, like... It is true, like, because even in my labor, I remember my midwife, I was sitting in the tub in the hospital, and I'm like, I look at her, and I'm like, I need this to be done. I don't think I can do this. And she goes, Darren, you do CrossFit. Nobody does that. You can do this. And I remember being like, you're right. You know, I can do this. It does. It just gives you that confidence. And, like, I think, like, working out in general, it's really funny, just real quick sidebar from someone who, like, doesn't really look at herself as, like, athletic or like someone who does that it's funny because I have like my whole perception on working out has changed it's like if you're not working out you're only doing yourself a disservice and this is pregnant or not like it's just to equip your older self into yeah. having a better life and like our grandma who's here who's supposed to be watching Davey 
<laughs> she was just telling us how she got really excited about how she was at the doctor and her doctor was like oh my gosh like we've never seen like someone your age be able to get up on the table by themselves yeah. you know and it's like that's crazy but our grandma side note she does crossfit with us so it's like it is really encouraging like you work out for the state of your body like god right. gives you one body so take care of it you know and that's kind of like something i've become really passionate about recent or not recently but like over the last few years where i'm like i've always known this but until you go through things you're like yeah that is very very true and it's very empowering to work out especially mm -hmm. when you're pregnant it's like when you're pregnant and you're showing up in the gym it's encouraging i think to other mm -hmm. people too there were a lot of like men mm -hmm. in our gym who were like well i can't believe you're here i'm like i need to be here like this has to be happening because like i'm about to do the hardest work out of my life in like however yeah. many months you know and it's like it is very true that is the hardest workout you'll ever do and i believe a lot of like my strength did come from just my body being strong from right. mm -hmm. like that and mentally Working out is really good for your mind. And so much of birth is mental. mental. Yeah. And so I think being there, I mean, that's exactly why people need affirmations and things when they're giving birth because it is so much mental strength. And I think that's like a really important thing. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Did you have anything else or should I go into my next no, one? I think that's good. I, you nailed it. I was like, yes. if you have questions yeah. We, yeah, absolutely. Um, my question, I will kind of keep a little more brief. Um, it was kind of must have supplements and things we can be doing to feel better during your pregnancy. So just general like health and wellness during pregnancy. Um, like I said, my pregnancy, I did feel really good. And I, I can attribute that so much to chiropractic care. So um, I did grow up in a chiropractic family, my grandfather, my uncle, and now my brother is a chiropractor. So it's just what I've always known. And it is very true though, like, because when you're pregnant, your body is shifting so mm -hmm. much in such a short amount of time. Like if you think about like actually what's happening inside of you, like it is nuts, like <laughs> truly. And so like I was going to get adjusted and seen by my brother twice a week when I was pregnant, which I think is twice a week is an awesome amount that you should be seeing a chiropractor once a week at the very least. Um, but they, it just, it helped me sleep better. Mm -hmm. I felt better. I was less sore. I mean, think about everything that's changing and shifting. Like it was so necessary to be seeing a chiropractor. I remember even telling you girls, I was like, I can't imagine being pregnant and not seeing a chiropractor. Right. Like if I was pregnant and didn't see a chiropractor, I'm like, what does that feel like you guys? Like, are you miserable or what? Like it totally helps. And that's like, I think that is ultimately the number one thing and finding a chiropractor who is neurologically based. Um, there's so many different Webster types of, technique. yeah, there's so many different types of chiropractic and chiropractic has a bad rep with a lot of people, which I think is so funny, but from someone who's been under chiropractic care my whole life, I'm like, I am, I mean, it sounds like like I'm gloating or something, but I'm like, I feel like I'm in pretty good health. Like I am, I fight off illness quickly. I'm really not sick often. And even if I am sick, it does not stop me from doing anything. Mm -hmm. Like I am very, like, I'm very grateful. Like my mom paved the way in home birth and chiropractic care, I feel like, but I know that's her, her mom did that also. So this is generational. Yes. And I feel very like lucky to have been born into a family that has like paved those ways and I do know it's a little bit different for a lot of people but um I will say like there's nothing weird about chiropractic if you look at it logically you have a doctor who is removing pressure from your spinal nerves your spinal nerves are what communicates to all of your organs in your body so it makes total sense like if you look from it from a logical standpoint that makes complete sense you are looking at the exact cause of things and fixing the root of that you are not covering anything up you are looking at exactly what is causing it and removing that and letting your body do what it's supposed to do. And God designed our bodies. I mean, I know we're all like Christians and we all love Jesus. We like know that there's a creator and he created us to work a certain way. And 
it's not that humans like have the power to like make us work better we just remove the things that make us not work right. so um i think that is the simplest way i can put chiropractic i think it's beautiful like <laughs> i'm like i'm a little like poetic about it but i'm like i really do think <laughs> that like chiropractic is a beautiful thing and i think it's part of i think working out and chiropractic care are things that and drinking water <laughs> are all things that should be part of every single human's life i think they'd see a huge huge like improvement in just their like mental well-being and then they'd see it in their physical well-being um so yeah i think that is huge another thing is like for pregnancy we all take prenatals mm -hmm. um something to look for there's so many different prenatals i think we all took different ones like we didn't even take similar ones i don't even know did you I, take i prenatals? don't even know i that's another thing when you probably 30 some know. years ago <laughs> i will tell you i remember uh ultrasounds mm -hmm. were just becoming that's a crazy yeah. thing mm -hmm. it you weren't always ultrasound yeah and they were just coming around to where the minute you found out you were pregnant they were wanting to ultrasound you yeah um, so you because i didn't were... know very much about ultrasound i'm like this is a new thing so yeah. i never had an ultrasound i think a, a good thing to point out is it's okay to question things like i think my mom kind of gives a good example of that like it's okay to just because someone else is doing something or it's the norm like it's okay to be like if you have a conviction or something like in your body that's telling you like i wonder why we do this and not mm -hmm. not just ultrasound but like just anything but it's like why do we do this it's okay to question that and those things that's just a sidebar but um as far as um supplements that's the word yeah. something to look for i think there's a lot of really good ones on the market um do you remember what you guys took whatever wouldn't make me throw up yes yeah, so <laughs> going on smell and size <laughs> Uh, and what did, do you remember what you took no i i remember um hearing that like garden of life has a really yeah, good, they do have a good one um but okay i can't remember if that's what i used okay what was the, it was pink something what did i use stork stork pink stork. stork i use pink stork i think um ultimately you need to look at um prenatals you don't want one that has folic acid in it that is a synthetic form of folate so you want to have folate mm -hmm. um, which is crazy how many prenatals actually have folic acid in them mm -hmm. um, so that's something but read the ingredients on prenatals read the ingredients yeah. on everything that you consume that you put into your body it's so important um, but especially prenatals um, when you're pregnant look at those ingredients try to find the one with the least I mean Fight with the least, least synthetic types of things, but definitely when you're doing it, you want folate, not folic acid. That's something that um, our midwives really like. We're like, yes, this is important because you don't want that synthetic form of that. Um, another thing was when I was pregnant, sunshine. You need to be in the sun. This is great advice for even if you're not pregnant, if you're having anxiety or any sort of like any like funks i call them i get into funk sometimes it's usually when i'm not getting sunlight which thank sorry. you baby <laughs> um why do babies love tin bowls <laughs> um no but anyways so like i think it's so important to be getting in the sun i am kind of a little bit more hippy dippy also i like to do like grounding exercises and techniques so like walking in the grass barefoot walking in like dirt where whatever you have like it does really help your like mental clarity your body mm -hmm. um getting enough sleep getting enough water i mean all those things seem like really silly and obvious but like it is crazy how many women do not get enough sleep and do not drink enough water and when you're pregnant rest your body like it is so okay like i remember feeling really guilty like laying down and like just chilling but i'm like my body is doing so much more than most people's body right now like i had to keep telling myself that yep. like, i'm creating a brain i'm creating limbs i'm creating a nervous system like it's okay that i'm tired and want to lay down like go like do those things and then also like nutrition wise i know we have like really intense cravings when we're pregnant i did have some like my most noteworthy craving was starburst jelly beans which are seasonal <laughs> which proved really frustrating in the middle of summer um but like you also have to 
think about almost like taking pride in what your body is doing and being like, I'm creating life. I'm going to take the most care of my body that I've ever mm-hmm. taken care of. Feed it well, like get enough protein. Don't starve yourself about, and like, oh my gosh, I cannot emphasize this enough. Do not worry about like, in quotes like gaining weight during pregnancy you are creating life it is okay to like gain a little bit of weight like it's totally what our bodies do i was a big mama and i loved it like i felt like really good and i'm like and i had a big baby which i was really proud of honestly i had an eight pound 11 ounce or so that's pretty good and your body your body gains what it needs to gain yeah i remember raya that was before i worked out or anything i gained the least amount when i was pregnant with raya i gained the most when i was active and fit through the yeah. whole thing which shows you that like your body does what it needs to do yeah. right so and like your body like and also like i just want to like before i end this point like because I just think it's so, because I've kind of gotten into a body, like, viewpoint thing where I'm like, you need to look at your body like, this is amazing what it does. And it's okay if it doesn't look exactly how you want it to during pregnancy. Like, it's doing really good, great things. And, like, that's amazing. And then once you have your baby, you're going to feel like a mushy marshmallow and you might hate it. But, like, it's okay. It's not going to be like that forever. And your body just did something really, really hard. So cut yourself some slack because it's fine. Like, I looked like a mushy marshmallow for a few months. Like, it was a little while. And then, you know, I'm like, you know what? Okay, I'm going to, like, get back into my routine and, like, do what I do. And you just feel better. And, like, give yourself grace. And don't, like, be so hard on yourself. And if, if you are being hard on yourself, just don't go on Instagram for a while either. Like, I think that's like an important thing. There's a lot of like great things on Instagram, but also like if it's bad for your mental health, don't do it. And that's just what I have to say about that. Anyways, that was a weird segue into ending that. (laughs) But yeah, did I miss anything? Well, I was going to say two things. Yes. Do you want to? I was going to say beef organs. Yeah, beef organs. Okay. So um, beef organs, take those when you're pregnant. There is so much. Even when you're not pregnant, honestly, taking beef organs. What's the brand that we like? Um, ancestral ancestral supplement. There's yes. a few. A few though. There's a few, yeah, but that's one of the more, I think, more common ones that people know maybe when they mm-hmm. hear of it. But beef organs are just like all around a really great thing to have into your supplement routine. Yeah. And I talked about this as an ad last week, but I thought I would just bring it up for pregnancy. Um, so someone yeah. I really enjoy on Instagram for um, prenatal nutrition is Lily Nichols and she's really um she has written a book on nutrition during pregnancy and postpartum um it offers a ton of recipes in it it is a good resource but she does state the importance of electrolytes during your pregnancy um especially if you notice that you're you're getting swollen feet or swollen hands it's probably that you aren't getting enough like salt and um, enough electrolytes into your system. And she even has studies that show that if you are supporting your body with electrolytes like Element, the one that I mentioned, which provides Mm -hmm. um, sodium, magnesium, and potassium, that you're less likely to develop preeclampsia. So um, highly recommend making sure that you're drinking. Also, what's that brand that 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 doctor follows that that comes in the tub, Mm -hmm. that brand? Is it Elite? I can't. Uh, Relight. 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 So Relight with comes a in like a tub. Yeah. That's right. We'll tag all these things so you guys can look. Um, and until one of them sponsors us, we will shout out both. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that even though we covered so much, everyone may have some more specific questions. Mm-hmm. We, I, I kind of wanted to stay away from really specific questions. Yeah. I, I tend to be a little bit outspoken on, on how I feel, so I yeah. don't want to. We need to have mom be quiet. I, 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 thought, this, I don't like this subject as much, but I'm going to definitely go with it. We're good. So <laughs> I love it. No, I think that's really good. Um, Anybody else have any closing remarks? Uh, no. I can't think no. of anything. I'm sure there's a lot of things that we left out that you yeah. can ask some questions and then um, we can yeah, be more true. specific. Okay. Yeah. I have, we have not thought about what next week is going to be. Mm-mm. Drop some suggestions. Yeah. So if you guys want to hear something specific let us know and we'll just go from there but anyways thank you guys for tuning in we're so happy to do this with you guys and we love you all and if you like this podcast share with your friends because if you don't then we're gonna have to not do this anymore (laughs) 
I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for. Yes. I know your time is valuable, and to listen to us. We tried to keep pretty, this one shorter than two hours. Yeah. <laughs> and we're at, I don't know, we're about like an hour. So, anyways. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank we thank love you. you. Bye. Bye. We'll talk to you next week. Say bye. bye. bye.